One of the hardest parts about landing a job is preparing for the questions they're going to ask you in the interview, especially technical questions. And there's plenty of blog articles out there that have sample questions for you to use, but a lot of them are really generic or they get outdated rather quickly. This is why using ChatGPT is one of the best things you can do to prepare for an interview. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can actually use ChatGPT to ask you questions pertaining to your exact interview, and then I'm going to test myself to see if I've got what it takes to land a job. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And like I mentioned, I want to show you how you can use ChatGPT to ask you interview questions for any job you're going to go into. So let me just paste in the general prompt that I like to use. Essentially, you want to come in here and tell ChatGPT that they are conducting an interview. This is going to help put them in the mindset of asking you the correct questions. Then after that, you want to say what the role is going to be. In our case, I'm going to be using a senior front end developer role, but whatever role you're applying for, make sure you put in what level it is, whether it's entry level, mid level, so on, and then put what the role is like front end, a Rust developer, a back end Angular developer, whatever it's going to be, just put your role in there as well. Then you tell it you want it to ask you questions. And in my case, I put the specific topics. I know that I want to interview for a job that deals with HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and React, pretty standard front end stuff. But if you're going for like a Rust job, make sure you just put in Rust here, for example, really whatever your job is going to be about. So whatever things you need to know and whatever the role is, make sure you put that in there. And then you tell it what the response should look like. In my case, I want a very specific, very generic response. I essentially say I want the response to contain the difficulty rating. So I know how easy or hard the question is. And then I want it to not give me the answer or anything else. I just want it to give me one question and that's it. And I'm telling it to start off by asking me a difficult question. And this is really useful because I can kind of gauge what level of difficulty I'm going to get. Initially, I said I wanted to ask me difficult questions, but if you're going for a more entry level job, you can ask it to ask you easier questions or medium level questions and so on. So if I just hit enter here, you can see that it's going to generate my response and it's like, okay, here we go. Here's a React JS question, difficulty is eight out of 10. And then I have the actual question, which in my case is what's the difference between using a regular function versus an error function for event handling in React components. And then what you can do is you can write out your response in ChatGPT and then just say, is this correct? And it'll tell you yes or no. And generally it'll give you information about how correct you were like, okay, you got this right or you got this wrong. But if you don't want to enter in all of the information about what it is, you can just say, show me the answer and then compare it to what you were thinking of in your head. So real quickly, I just typed out what my response for this question is. Essentially, I said, if you're doing function components, there's really no difference to worry about. But if you're using a class component, the this keyword is really the major difference. So I can put that as my answer and then I can just say, is this correct at the very end? Is this correct? There we go. And when I hit enter, it's going to be like, okay, yes, you are correct. And then it's going to give me an explanation as well. And this is really good because I can compare what their explanation is versus what I actually wrote out. It looks like based on what I'm seeing here, it says the binding of this is the main thing that they're talking about, which is exactly what I mentioned. So now I can just say, you know, give me another question. Give me another difficult question on a new topic. So now I should hopefully get something from like CSS, JavaScript, or so on. So here we go. Certainly here's a difficult CSS question. What's the difference between nth child and the nth of type pseudo class? So this time, instead of actually writing out what the answer is, I'm just going to explain my thought process. And then I'll show you kind of the difference between just show my answer versus typing it out. So in this case, the difference between these two is nth child is just going to give you the nth child. So as I say nth child two, it's going to give me the second child inside of whatever element I'm selecting, whether it's a span, div, button, doesn't matter. Nth of type instead is going to give me the second type. So if I can say nth of type two, it's going to give me the second element of that specific type. So like a span, it'll give me the second span inside of that child. So this is going to be my answer. That's what I think it is. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty certain. So now I can just say, show me the answer. There we go. And now it's going to give me the answer. Uh, okay. I guess it's saying to the interview directly, however, can provide an explanation, which is fine. That's really good enough. And it says, end child selects an element based on position. That's exactly what I talked about. This is going to get the second child, literally the exact same thing I said. And this selects it based on position among its siblings. So it's going to get you the second element of that P type. And it also shows an example here. So you can see nth child two here is going to select the second child. And here it's going to select the second P element, which would be right here, paragraph two in this case. So it does a really good job of showing you that and it explains it more right here, which is really, really useful. So not only does it give me the answer, it gives me an example and it explains what's going on. Now, I actually had the idea for this video by listening to the Syntax FM podcast. Just recently, a couple days ago, they actually did a video where they were asking each other questions based on what ChatGPT gave them. And it made me think that this is a great tool that you can actually use to study for yourself to get interview questions. So I can, for example, say, you know what, if I really want to test my JavaScript skills, because CSS and React, I'm feeling pretty good on, I can say, can you give me another difficult question about JS? 
and now it's going to give me a JavaScript question. And again, it's going to give me a difficult one, which is exactly what I want. This one is actually not very difficult because it's just asking me the difference between undefined and null. Essentially, undefined means you haven't given it a value, while null is explicitly saying that there is no value. And then, you know, I can say, show me the answer. There we go. And it's probably going to say something like how it can't. Okay, there we go. Two distinct values. It just says undefined means it has not been declared. And it should say null means that there's explicitly no value. So exactly what I said. I don't really think that's particularly a difficult question, but you know, maybe based on what you're actually looking for. I don't really care about the rest of the response. And let's say that I asked it for a question. It wasn't difficult enough. I'm going to say, can you give me a more difficult JS question? Whoops, question. That one was too easy. There we go. And now hopefully this time it's going to give me a more challenging one. It looks like it didn't this time, but that's the thing with AI. It's not always going to be perfect. So I can say, you know what, regenerate this. This wasn't good enough in my opinion. Okay, it's giving me the same thing, but I can just say, try to give me a harder one. There we go. And now hopefully it's going to be a little bit more difficult. Here we go, what's the difference between asynchronous and synchronous code? All these aren't super difficult, but some of them are more difficult than others. Really the important thing about this though, if we just scroll all the way back up to the very top, the important thing is the very first prompt that you give it. I would just break around starting out a brand new chat so there's no history and just make sure you give it a prompt that's really good explaining exactly what you want to be tested on based on your role, your level, and the topics you want to learn about. Otherwise, you can just copy this, kind of change the things. I'll put this exact prompt in the descriptions or in the comments as well so you can copy it exactly. But I would just use this prompt and then just swap in the different things based on your role and based on what you're actually looking for to learn. And it's going to give you some really good responses that you can use to figure out exactly what's going on and to really test yourself. And the best part is, is you can just do this forever. You can generate infinite number of questions while in like a blog, there may only be like five or six questions that pertain to what you're looking for, or maybe even none. While with ChatGPT, you can just infinitely keep generating more and more and more. So let's just generate another question here. This one's going to be to challenge myself. It's going to be quite difficult. I'm going to say, can you give me an HTML question about accessibility? Hopefully I spelled that correctly. There we go. So what is the purpose of the alt attribute on an image? There we go. This says it's a difficulty eight out of 10. Honestly, I don't think it is, but the alt attribute just gives you a way to be able to say what an image is. So if I have an image of a dog eating pizza in the alt tag, I would just say dog eating pizza. That way someone that's using a screen reader, it'll read out what the image is displaying. So whatever you put in the alt tag, a screen reader will read out to someone so that they can't see the image. It at least tells them what is going on and how does it benefit it? Yeah, it just helps people that are using screen readers. So I could also say, show me the answer. There we go. And then you can see here, the alt attribute allows me to put alternative text that's displayed and it's read out by screen readers, exactly what I was talking about. And then again, we can generate more and more and more questions. And that's what I really love about this. So let's do another question. Give me another question. There we go. And let's see, here's a difficult HTML question about accessibility. What's the purpose of the title attribute on an HTML element? Okay, this is another interesting one. So if you have the title attribute on an element and you hover your mouse over the element, the title element will show up kind of like a tool tip almost, which is somewhat useful, but it takes a long time for it to show up. Like, honestly, that's not the best use case for it, but that will show up there. I'm not sure if it'll actually read those things out from screen readers that I don't know about. So I am not really sure on this one, other than that, I know if you hover over an element that has the title attribute, it'll show that up in like a little pop-up after a few seconds. And there we go. Let's see what it says, because I'm actually curious. Uh, provide additional information, typically as a tool tip. Okay, so that is correct. Uh, on a wide range of HTML elements. Yep, yep, yep. Is it provides additional context, da, 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 such as screen readers? So, okay, so the screen reader can announce what the title attribute is when it's encountered, which is really useful. Uh, do, 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 do. Avoid overusing it. Yeah, that makes sense. Cool. Yeah, I like that. So I didn't really know this middle section. I wasn't sure, but I definitely knew this top section. So I got like 50% on this question, essentially. But now I've learned something new just by using this tool. One thing to keep in mind, though, is that ChatGPT is not always right. A lot of times if I run into something that I don't know, like for example, this section, it would be a good idea to actually search the web as well to just verify that what ChatGPT is saying is actually correct because it's not trained on the most up-to-date data. It's dated on like just or September, 2021, I believe is the cutoff. So really new stuff won't be in here. And also, like I said, it just sometimes gets things wrong because it's an AI, it's learning off of things and people get things wrong. So the AI will get things wrong. So I really recommend that if you get an answer back that is different than what you expected, or maybe you didn't know something, just to double check to make sure that's correct. Just go to like MDN, for example, they have great documentation for all of this.
Now, if this looks interesting to you, make sure you try out the prompt. I'll leave it in the description and the comments for you to try it out yourself and let me know how it goes for you. Also, if you want to see some more videos on ChatGPT, like if it's going to take your job or how to actually use the API that they have built around it, I'm going to have videos on both of those linked right over here for you. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.